In the last video, I set out to fix up my chicken plucker so that I could use it because I've got a bunch of meat birds that are ready to go. And while I was working on this thing, I ended up breaking the plasma cutter. Long story short, parts were unavailable for that machine, so I did what I guess you would call a farmer fix and tried to patch things up with JB Weld. And today I'm gonna try to fire up the plasma cutter, see if my repair worked, and see if we can get this chicken plucker finished. That's what's going on today on Farmer Tyler Ranch. All right, well this is the moment of truth here. I've only got 50 pounds of pressure in the tank. We'll see if my repair can even hold that. And if it can, then we'll turn the air compressor on, bring it up to operating pressure and see what happens. When I was kind of messing around feeling it, I plugged it with my finger and I think it blew the hose off inside the machine. So lucky me, I get to take this apart again so that I can reattach the hose. This is the water separator that I was referring to and it's got, let's see if I can show you. It's got this little drain hose here um, with a hole that you know, so you're not draining water inside the machine. So we need to put that back in the hole where it belongs. Let's try this again. Well, I don't know, it's still leaking out the bottom of that water separator, but it's not leaking off as fast as it was before. So I'm pretty sure it'll cut like this. Let's, uh, Let's try it. I mean, I, I don't know, I'm kind of at a loss. It wasn't exactly, uh, a perfect repair, but it does work. The air compressor can still keep up with it despite that constant leak. So that's just gonna have to be good enough for now, I guess. Anyway, I'm, I'm done messing with that. The thing that I'm really wanting to work on is this. So let's keep moving forward with it. At this stage in the game, I don't really have like a concrete plan or know exactly how I'm gonna do this. So I'm just gonna try a few things, clamp them up and see how everything looks. Well, it's not quite gonna work. But I think it's close. So I think the motor is still too high. I want this belt to work. And yeah, we're just not quite there. We gotta go down another, boy, two inches maybe? Yeah, two inches would be about it. Let me add some spacers that'll drop these cross members two inches and I'll get back with you. Okay, let's try it again. Things are looking lined up a lot better now. Yeah, that'll work like that. This design locates everything where I need it, but this can be improved upon. This is good for mock-up, but not necessarily for the final product. So I'm just gonna build the piece that I've got in my mind. And when I put it on there, I think you'll kind of see where I'm going with it.
It's the next day now. We're back out here in the shop and the motor mount is done. And I'm really happy with the way this turned out. It's a lot simpler than what I'd originally planned on doing. It's a lot more effective and just all around better than the way things were before. So this is how I should have done it in the first place. Uh, sometimes it just takes a while for the right design to pop into your head. So two more things need to happen before this is done done and ready to be put into use. And the first is the part of the project that I probably look forward to the least, and that is the wiring. I've got to put a waterproof switch on this thing and get it all set up so that I can just plug it in to an ordinary outlet, flip the switch and it'll fire right up. And then the other thing that I have decided is gonna be necessary after looking at this, is I'm gonna need some sort of a shroud or a cover to put over the motor because when I'm using this, I'll be spraying water in it. There's a decent chance that water ends up coming in the end of the vents on the motor and we don't want that. And I was thinking about it. I've got some of these scrap pieces of aluminum sitting around here. I think I wanna make the, the splash guard out of aluminum just to practice my aluminum welding and it'll be something that doesn't rust and it really won't add any noticeable weight to this thing. This already weighs a ton. If I was to do this over again, I would probably build the whole thing out of aluminum, but you know, we live and we learn. What I wanna do is take this wire that's already wired into the motor out and then wire in all of this stuff uh, that was originally on the plucker. So. We've got you know some issues to take care of, but waterproof outdoor switch here, and then a GFI plug. Uh, I would like to mount this maybe up here somewhere, and then just run these wires directly into the motor, so we don't have a bunch of wires hanging around, getting in the way, you know, like they do. So we'll start by getting all these leads disconnected and out of the way. I'm by no means an electrician. Like a guy that I used to work with would often say, I know just enough to get myself in trouble. There we go. I got the switch uh, fixed up here a little bit. It's, it's, I didn't film it just cause, I don't know, just kind of tedious, boring work, I guess. But I need to now find a way to mount it to the frame. And I was thinking, that there would be some mounting holes in the back of the box here, because that's how these usually are. But since this is designed to be a waterproof unit, they, they don't have holes back there, which makes perfect sense. And I don't want to drill holes because I want this to remain waterproof. So unfortunately, I'm gonna just mount it with zip ties. It's not really the way that I want to do it, but I can't think of a better way at the moment. So uh, yeah, that's what we're gonna do. Yeah, I don't know about this. It doesn't seem like it really will hold it very good. We need white, black, and green. We are not using red, so I'm just going to cut it off short. There. That'll work, eh? can't pull them off, so we're gonna say that's good. I feel like I should mention this is not a how-to wire an electric motor. This thing could very well start smoking and burn itself up uh, once we turn it on. I'm not really sure. I'm gonna do it the way that I think is right, but I'm not 100% confident here. I'm gonna go white to black. Red in the motor, we're going to go red, uh, black on the input. The only one I'm 100% confident on is the green one. <laughs> because green always goes to green. So we're going to do that. There we go. What do you think? Is that right? Wrong? Nothing left to do but plug it in and try it out. Here goes nothing.
All right, well, we have success. This is running. Everything is working the way that it's supposed to. It does sound a little bit rough, though. I'm hoping that it's just the bearings need some grease. Well, I got to thinking the reason that it's running rough didn't really seem to be the bearings. Uh, so the belt is probably out of alignment. And as I hold my straight edge up here, it's not terrible, but it's it's not perfect either. Also, I noticed that this pulley had a little ding in it and it was pinching the belt every time it went around. So I got that bent out very carefully because I was really worried about breaking this, but we made it. Uh, so hopefully getting the dip out, getting the pulleys aligned with each other after doing those two things, this will run as smooth as it can. So we'll be happy with that. I've got this piece of scrap aluminum here. This is left over from the uh, poop guards that we put on the stock trailer. And I think that there is enough metal here to do what I want to do to make a little shroud to cover this motor. Well, don't look too close. The aluminum TIG weldings, I still need some practice with that for sure. But this is a great thing to practice on because if it fails, there's really no consequences. Still pretty hot, but if I have gloves on, I should be all right. So basically, the idea is somewhere in here. I'm having a slight clearance issue with the, uh, the shield against the blue tub on the plucker. So I'm going to try to cut a little arch out of there and then it should kind of fit up nicely against that. There you have it. There's a bunch of modifications here that I've been wanting to do for a long time. Feels good to finally have them done. I'm now actually a little bit excited to start harvesting chickens and try this thing out. Thanks for hanging out in the shop with me today, guys, and I hope I'll see you again on Farmer Tyler Ranch.